Welcome to TV Anthology Reviews. We will be covering episodes 15 and 16 of season 2 of the anthology show Monsters. Episode 15, Mr. Schwaber. Do you think Goosebumps is too violent and scary? Does Tickle Me Elmo give you nightmares? Well, I have an episode for you, Mr. Schwaber, a G-rated family-friendly escapade from the mind of everybody's favorite writer, Jules Selbo. An episode that stands out amongst the entire monster series, with a tone so light and music so goofy, this could be on Nick Jr. Roy finds a toy in a cereal box of Wonder Pops that tells him he just has to add water and see the toy grow. The little kid Roy has his mother, Miss Barton, constantly barking orders at him, yelling at him to wash her clothes and clean the bathroom with a toothbrush, do every chore in the house, while she and his sister sit outside and sunbathe. Roy's mother and sister have teamed up against him, so while doing their chores for them, he is stuck in the basement, with only a train track to keep him company. They are mean to him, but unlike a previous episode, Parents from Space, this is done in a kid's lighthearted tone, complete with goofy music, to let you know this is a little kid's episode. Roy, look at me. Don't you think I look like Sybil Shepherd? Um, no. Five minutes in, we see the monster for this episode, Mr. Schwalber. Like the cream song, maybe? Mr. Schwalber is a green puppet with a goofy face who becomes Roy's friend. He asks him for some lick -em up water to help Mr. Schwalber grow bigger. The episode takes place in the basement the whole time, and Roy only has a train track to keep him company. Now, he has a new pet. Mr. Schwalber starts throwing really funny, hilarious, Jules Selbo type insults toward Roy's mom. <laughs> Get ready to laugh. Who does your hair? Frederick of Fright Street? Any more smart talk, young man, you'll be licking up the kitchen floor. I hope you wear a bag over your head in public. Shut up! Did you tell me to shut up? After more bad taunts, Mr. Schwalber finally gets some lick -em up that he wants, and he grows to his full size. With this terrifying dinosaur fully grown, Roy now is in control of this house. After all, who would want to cross this horrifying monster? If this was a Goosebumps episode, I would give it a 5. But it's monsters, so I will say a 3. It's the only episode like this, so it's a tolerable curiosity that I hated when I first saw it. I won't say it grew on me, but re-watching it, I knew what I was in for. I can imagine in the 1980s gathering around the TV, telling your friends, there's this new horror anthology show that is much scarier and bloodier than Tales from the Dark Side, turning on your TV and getting this, Mr. Schwalber. Wow. Luckily, the next episode, Per Chance to Dream, gets us right back on track. As I mentioned, Mr. Schwalber is written by Jules Selbo, who will come back to haunt us during my coverage of Tales from the Dark Side. This is the last episode she does of Monsters. Rocket's Red Glare voiced the puppet Mr. Schwalber. He was a fixture with early punk bands. He was a roadie for the man The Hassles, featuring singer Billy Joel before he hit it big, and was a bodyguard for the Sex Pistols. He delivered drugs to Sex Pistols bassist Sid Vicious's girlfriend. Nancy Spungen, the night she was murdered, leading people to speculate it was really Rocket's Red Glare and not Sid Vicious that stabbed and killed Nancy Spungen. Rocket's Red Glare himself died in 2001 due to kidney and liver failure due to excessive drug use. The main character, Roy, is played by Robert Oliveri, who is a famous kid actor. He was in Edward Scissorhands and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and its sequel, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. He left the industry somewhere around 1993 before he was 15 years old. Probably a smart choice, considering how child actors usually turn out. Monsters, Season 2, Episode 16, Perchance to Dream is the most visually interesting of the entire series. After the lackluster puppet, Mr. Swaber, our palettes are cleansed as this tale stretches the monster's budget and utilizes green screen effects as much as possible to create its dream world. We get a thousand monsters in this one. It starts with a killer book right out of Hogwarts. The main character, Alex, has suffered a head injury leading him to hallucinate. He hasn't slept in two weeks. His girlfriend, Megan, comes over to help him. Does that feel like a hallucination? I like how the set designers just put posters of their favorite bands in Alex's room. He has one of Nina Cherry and Paula Abdul. I would have guessed Alex was more of a Def Leppard man, but I guess not. Alex explains his head injury comes from a mugging on a subway. 
This man who mugged him starts following him around once he falls, literally, into the dream world. They seem to drop right into the set from Babes in Toyland. Technically, this episode has achieved more locations than the last five episodes combined, even if it's uh, a lot of green screen effects. These large toys are from his childhood. Then, he opens a door to see a visualization of his girlfriend Megan from a different type of dream that involves water. I don't get it. They go from the Babes in Toyland set to an FMV game from the early 90s. This is when the bad guy starts chasing them, sending trains after Alex and Megan, alluding to his previous mugging while on the subway. Alex has to find a way to defeat this man. To add insult to injury, crazy nuns are also trying to kill him. He mentioned earlier he turned away from religion after a tumultuous time in Catholic school. I really like the effects. There seems to be some references to not only Babes in Toyland, but also more expressionist movies like Metropolis. They use all sorts of effects from models to matte paintings. And the more you watch, you can see these items aren't random. They're from Alex's life, something that's hard to catch in the first viewing. He gets to his final destination, the subway, where he first got his head injury from the mugger. It's a bit anticlimactic. He gets beat up and then comes to terms with his subconscious after a pep talk with his girlfriend, realizing all he has to do to return to normal is give that bad guy a great big bear hug. I think the villain could have looked more intimidating. He isn't very scary. They just threw a leather jacket on a construction worker looking guy and had him mean mug the camera. It's a wild ride until the end and has more watchability than anything else in the series. They throw so many visuals at you if you blink you miss them. This was obviously a labor of love and is unique. I like it. 9 out of 10. Both characters also do a great job and had great careers after this series. Per Chance to Dream is a dream episode done right. Alex returns to the real yeah, world where he can finally sleep and we get a happy ending. Megan is played by Sarah Buxton, who is best known for being in 195 episodes of the soap opera The Bold and the Beautiful, where she played the femme fatale, Morgan DeWitt. We shouldn't be having this conversation. No. Conversation isn't what we need. Morgan, stop. No, you stop. Stop pretending like you don't need anyone. You can't get through this on your own. You need someone. Alex was played by Raphael Sabarge. He was recently in the Netflix series Dahmer. He has 179 acting credits, including voice acting for games like EverQuest 2, Mass Effect, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, and Grim Fandango, among others. He was also in Risky Business with Tom Cruise and played Tom Piper from 1997's Babes in Toyland. See, it all comes together in the end. All right, in two weeks, we're going to do two more episodes. Episode 17, One Wolf's Family, and Episode 18, The Offering.